Have you ever had a cool idea, but no clue how to actually make it look good in Photoshop? Turns out it's not about drawing skills and it goes beyond just knowing the tools. The secret is having a consistent and repeatable process. And after doing it wrong for like 15 years or something ridiculous, in the next five minutes, I'm gonna share my process with you in a desperate attempt to save you from something that's likely holding you back. And I'll show you how I turned this low res screenshot into a work of art step by step. So first you'll need to grab the Photoshop beta, go to preferences and enable cloud processing, select subject, add a layer mask and you get a much cleaner selection. And it's way more detailed too and here it even got the bowstring. And now that's done, I'm gonna go back to the normal version of Photoshop. Next, I'm gonna add a minimum filter and this is going to remove that fringing, which is that white edge around the outside of the subject. And then the remove tool is perfect for removing things you don't want in the image. So sorry chaps, but you've got to go and random thing left over, you can go too. And the first big step is to build the scene. So we're not worrying about color correction or anything. We're just cutting out images, adjusting their position and rotation and trying to create a well-balanced composition. And to refine the edges further, we're using the brush tool and a layer mask. And I would bump up the hardness a bit just so the edges don't look too soft and fluffy. The liquify filter is perfect for sculpting objects and you can see me here making my own little pride rock. And if you'd like a nighttime scene, color lookup and hue saturation are the two adjustment layers you need to use. And desaturating the color is really gonna help sell that nighttime effect. Now, if you only take away one thing from this video, please make it this next one. Oh, hang on a sec, there's a squirrel out there. <gasps> Anyway, balance your exposure across your different images. Honestly, it's the quickest way to make your work look instantly more professional. So to do this, add a hue saturation adjustment layer, desaturate it and place it above all other layers. Now you've removed the color, clip some curves adjustment layers to each object and balance the light and dark areas so that they all match. Here's a comparison between balancing the exposure the wrong way and doing it the right way. And hopefully you can see the difference, but if you skip this step, heed my warning, no amount of blending modes are gonna be able to fix this. Now you can use a small soft brush to actually make hair and feathers look a bit more realistic. And this is made much easier when using a stylus because you can adjust the pen pressure. But the same brush that I would use for drawing new hairs, I'm using here to just extend these feathers and actually make them look a bit more realistic. This is one of those areas where Photoshop, even in the beta, did struggle with the selection. Now to quickly get some better hair, I can use the lasso tool to make a selection and then go to edit and use generative fill and generate an entirely new ponytail. And I did this a few times on this project and ended up with a hairstyle I never would have even thought of. Now you can also make your own brushes and even draw hair from scratch and I go deep into that in my Photoshop masterclass and there's a link below if you're curious. And when it comes to brushing in shadows or highlights you can use the exposure or curves adjustment layers and use a soft feathered brush with a low value for the flow so we're gradually brushing in these shadows and building them up rather than going too hard too quickly because you'll end up with a big dark mess and it just won't look realistic. So here you can see the moon is my main light source and I'm brushing in the shadows and making them even darker for areas that aren't going to be touched by the moonlight. Now for highlights, we can use the same process. We just need to use different settings on the exposure adjustment layer. And just like before, we're doing this slowly and gradually brushing in areas that would be lit by the moonlight. Now a clever trick here for the bowstring is to rotate the canvas, get that bowstring perfectly horizontal, and then I can use the brush tool with shift to draw a perfectly horizontal highlight. Now on a new layer, I'm going to use some light ray brushes. I'm gonna stamp this in and then use free distort to just kind of make it larger and make it feel like the light rays are coming from the moon. And then I can adjust the opacity just to dial it back a bit and then brush away any hard edges. Now to add fog, just add a solid color adjustment there. Pick a soft brush with a very low flow value and brush over areas repeatedly where you want the fog to be thicker. And you can also download fog and mist brushes that you can just stamp in with one click. And this definitely makes life easier. Another mistake I see often is an over-reliance on blending modes and whilst they are useful and very powerful and can be tempting to try and get a quick result, they should under no circumstances ever be used as a substitute for good methodical compositing. So here I'm using a solid color adjustment layer with blue just to add some little lights around the armor set. And I'm using linear dodge as the blending mode here. And this is where blending modes can really shine when it comes to creating realistic lighting effects. Like I'm doing exactly the same thing here on the bracelet. And again, just using that soft brush to build this up gradually. 
Now here you can see me using a cloud brush to actually add some small dust particles around the rock. And if you're into doing this kind of work, brushes really are a secret weapon and I get most of mine from Envato. Now, rather than compositing a nose ring, I'm just going to draw one. And this can be faster and easier for some of the smaller details. Now for that blurry background, you can use the tilt shift filter. And this is great if you want things in focus in the foreground, but to get blurrier as you move further away. And under the same menu, there's also the path blur. And this is great for blurring the edges of things that are, for example, blowing in the wind. So parts that are still there in focus. And I can use this filter to add movement to things that are, well, moving. And lastly, the secret weapon at the end, the camera raw filter. And you can add this to a flattened version of your design and I would bump up the texture and clarity to just get a bit more detail. And there's tons of sliders to play around with as well. And if you'd like to see these core techniques in action on a real project, I would definitely recommend clicking the video on screen now, wherever it is, who knows, you'll get the files to follow along as well so you can have a go for yourself. So uh, yeah, give that a click and I'll see you in a sec.